All right. Okay, welcome everybody. This is the uh, first Excelsius educational program and it's uh, very exciting uh, for me. I'm the host, uh, Dr. Michael Poon. This is a, a new initiative that Dr. Henry Chan asked us to uh, start this year to add the educational component to our growing uh, program. And this is uh, particularly exciting to me because I spent many years teaching and uh, education is part of my uh, everyday activity for many years. And today particularly is very exciting because we have a speaker who's not only a good educator, but he's also uh, a researcher. But before I introduce the speaker today, I just want to um, share the screen. Can you see the screen? Mm. Uh, okay. okay. Yep. So this is the program for this year. Uh, we have a cast of many excellent speakers. Uh, most of them are either leaders uh, or the um, chief medical officer of our program. So you can see there are many exciting topics that we'll cover and it will be always be the last Wednesday of the month uh, for this program is uh, at 6 p.m. And today we have our first speaker from the Hemonk division, uh, Dr. <coughs> Song Chong Go, who's a friend. And also I've been working with him on a, on his research grant. And I think he's gonna give us some very exciting uh, development on his uh, research project. Dr. Go uh, is our division head of Excelsius Hematology and Oncology. He's a faculty of the NYU School of Medicine. He got his MD degree from Shangtao Medical School and PhD from Purdue University. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna pass the uh, platon over to Dr. Guo for him to share with us some of the exciting development in the treatment of uh, gastric cancer. Let's see. Okay. Um, Let me see. Okay. Uh, um, so thank you so much, uh, Dr. Poon, for the. Uh, the introduction. So let me share my screen and continue uh, uh, to this. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 Yes. Um, good. So so today um, I'm gonna talk about uh, gastric cancer. Um, so big, uh, you know, gastric cancer is is such a big topic and then I will so basically I will just break down uh, my talk into uh, two parts um, so in the first part I'll just give a little bit you know, overview uh, about the basics about uh, about gastric cancer about staging about the treatment and then for the second part you know I'm gonna um, share our recent work of um, of a uh, phase three uh, clinical trial of the um, uh, gastric cancer. It's, it's very, very uh, exciting. And then I can, I, I hope that everybody can stick to the end. And then I know that it's, it's six o'clock, everybody want me to finish early and get to the dinner. I'll try my best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so gastric cancer, you know, is actually, is, uh, we 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 see a lot of gas cancer in in clinically, and then in US, there's like twenty two thousand patients diagnosed this every year, and then about half of the patients they will they will die. Um, so over the past uh, uh, 30, uh, 40 years, the overall survival of the of the gas cancer has actually been improving. Um, you know, from the from the number here, sixteen percent increased to twenty seven percent. So let's look at the number of uh, New York City. So so the data is actually from the statistical department of, of New York City. We can see that 
Um, so cancer death is the is in top three uh, category of uh, causing the death. I think number one is uh, heart disease, uh, and then number two, I forgot, but number three is is cancer. So number one. Uh, for in, in the cancer, number one is lung cancer followed by colorectal and liver pancreas. So stomach in in Chinese patient is number five. It's actually um, it it kill more patient uh, compared to breast or prostate cancer. So um, so for overall New York City patient, you know I think uh, for all the population, breast and prostate kill more than 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 stomach. Uh, but a uh, Chinese patient, you know, is it, like the num number five cure. Um, so a, a lot of patients, you know, when they diagnose, they, they have the surgery, uh, but, but eventually, you know, a lot of patients, they, they recur or they diagnose it with um, a metastatic cancer. So we, we can see that here is like um, the, um, so, uh, half of the patient, you know, they will die within a year. Uh, so if they diagnose with stage four, um, and for stage three or two, uh, they're not much better. They're better, but not much better. You can see that the overall survival is like a year or two. It's, it's, it's a terrible uh, disease. Um, and, you know, ma many patients that ask about the, the risk factor, so for uh, for our patient population, you know, I, I would say H. pyroli uh, is is probably the, the 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 number one, and then alcohol smoking, uh, these are also like the the risk factor that we can that we can change. Um, so. Um, so as far as I know, no, the, the, um, so current guidelines, they don't recommend uh, screening for gastric cancer for asymptomatic patient. Um, so when we, when we talk about the uh, presenting symptoms for gastric cancer, so they are very non-specific, you know, weight loss, abdominal pain, you know, nausea, dysphagia, um, and, then, and then GI bleeding. So basically, you know, you can put this symptom in gastritis, in you know pancreatitis or pancreatic cancer, you you, uh, it's just very hard to to tell that uh, which patient will will have uh, will have will have gastric cancer. So so in my practice, you know, I have very low threshold to refer a patient to see our GI colleague for for EGD. Um, so for for gastric so for gastric cancer patients, so the staging is a TNM, T as a tumor, N as a N as a lymph node, M as a distal uh, metastasis. Um, when when uh, when gastric cancer was diagnosed by by EGD, um, so uh, in in general we we'll order a CT chest abdomen pelvis with IV contrast. Um, but actually, you know, PET is a little bit better. Uh, but a lot of insurance company they they won't approve the uh, the PET scan, so then CT is, is fine. Um, and sometimes we will refer patient for EUS to get a accurate TNN staging. Uh, sometimes surgeon they will bring uh, the patient for a uh, laparoscopy watching to see if they have uh, carcinomatosis. Uh, and, and and by the way, if anyone have any you know question, uh, please feel free to to interrupt. Um, so for um, so after after we done the, the the staging, you know, if the cancer is an early stage disease, so for example, it's uh, TIS or T1, we we usually will you know refer back to to GI for endoscopy resection or upfront surgery. For local regional disease, um, so previously, and then it's also for most of the uh, Asian country that, uh, so upfront surgery is the, the standard of care. Um, but now, uh, at least in US, more and more patients, they will receive perioperative uh, chemotherapy. Um, and so I, I will show you the data 
for the preoperative chemotherapy a little bit later. Um, so for um, so quite often, you know, when a patient so after they 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 see the surgeon, you know, the surgeon did the uh, uh, partial gastrectomy or total gastrectomy, they refer patient to see us. Uh, patient has like T T three and one disease, and we see the patient, and then we recommend adjuvant chemotherapy, and then. And then the 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 pay, you know the patients usually the first question is why do I why do I need it and then so here's a here's a data so the data is from the classic study so they randomized uh, surgically a resected patient um, into uh, six months of uh, chemotherapy they use K-pop versus uh, observation uh, observation is like no no adjuvant uh, therapy. Um, so here is the outcome. Uh, so in in the right in the right hand side of the screen, we we see that five years uh, disease free survival. Um, so um, those receive adjuvant chemotherapy, sixty eight percent of the patient remain disease free, but those without chemotherapy, only only half of the patient remain disease free, and then five year overall survival is 78 versus 69 percent so so after this you know um so the um uh, the post-op chemotherapy you know become the the standard um so now i'm gonna sh show you you know why uh sometimes we uh we we offer pre-op uh chemotherapy so uh, sometimes uh, patients they just don't understand. You know, after they diagnose with uh, gas cancer, all they want is to do the surgery as uh, like ASAP. They don't want to wait a day. But we will we'll tell them that uh, wait wait a little bit. You need you know a few you know cycle of chemotherapy and then surgery, and then after surgery we do a little more chemotherapy. Um, so the data is. Uh, uh, from uh, the the magic study and then the fraud study, so I was you know because the limited time I'll just skip the magic study. I'll talk about the fraud. So the fraud study they you know compare uh, the gastric cancer. So basically you know four cycle of fraud. So they use those Texo five U leucovorin oxaliplan. So chemotherapy followed by resection followed by four more cycle of chemotherapy. And then below that, they use a different chemo uh, regimen. Uh, so the fraud regimen, uh, you know, when, when we compare the overall survival, the red line has much better outcome compared to uh, ECF. So for young and fit patients that can, they can tolerate the chemotherapy, the fraud is actually the standard. So, um, so we, we usually, we offer it uh, to young and fit patient, you know, unless patient they, uh, uh, the tumor is relatively small and then the surgeon, they feel very comfortable, they can resect it, uh, or like the patient, they're old, they may not able to tolerate uh, the pre-op chemotherapy. Um, so, but of course, it, 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 it depends, you know, the, the surgeon or the uh, institution. Um, sometimes people ask about what's the role of radiation. In most of the case, we don't offer, uh, we, we don't refer them to radiation oncology for treatment unless they receive D1 resection or they have positive margin. Um, so as, as I said earlier, a lot of patients, they present with de novo metastatic disease or uh, the disease recur after after the surgery, after chemotherapy. So we offer them systemic uh, cytotoxic chemotherapy. Um, so, uh, I, so I, I tell this to the patient again and again, that the, the benefit of the patient is to relieve the symptoms and prolong the life. Uh, you know, gastric cancer patient, you know, uh, they, they quite often they present, you know, uh, with pain, weight loss, 
uh, and then GI bleeding, they uh, quite a lot of them, they're, they're, they're miserable. And then and then I will, I will offer chemotherapy. So, um, and, and, you know, we all know that the cytotoxic chemotherapy have the side effect, you know, I, I don't really need to list all the side effects here. Uh, but later on, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the data as to why we still, why we still do it. Um, so in today's talk, you know, more, more importantly, you know, I will talk about uh, the targeted therapy and then the uh, immunotherapy. So, um, so here is the overall survival data for advanced gastric cancer. So in average, uh, when a patient is diagnosed with advanced gastric cancer, if we don't do any treatment, so BSC stands for best supportive care, the average uh, survival is about you know, three, four months. Uh, and then you know, meanwhile, patients have a lot of, uh, have, have a lot of uh, symptoms. So, uh, so, uh, so people done you know, numerous like clinical trials, they compare different chemo regimen, you know, six plus and five U, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then we can see that the overall survival, so these are all average number. So the overall survival, you know, gradually increase from three months, six months, nine months, 11 months. And then, so for the TOGA study is actually 13.8 months. And then, so here is the, the, the TOGA study. So a subset of uh, the gastric cancer patient, about you know twenty percent of the patient, they are HER two positive, and then so in 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 this study, uh, patient was randomized to receive uh, chemotherapy or chemotherapy plus trastuzumab. So trastuzumab uh, so has, has a has a has a different name called Herceptin. So Herceptin usually being treated with breast cancer. Uh, but for gastric cancer with HER2 positive, we use Herceptin as well. So we can see that uh, the overall survival increase uh, from 11 uh, months to 13.8 months. Um, so the, the conclusion is a combination of Herceptin with chemotherapy significantly prolong uh, overall survival of HER2 positive gastric cancer. So, so in, in, in gastric cancer, you know, I think so patient selection is the is a key. So we we stop doing you know one size fits all. So basically, when we uh, when we see a patient and then we pay we pay a lot of attention to the pathology report. You know, one thing that we look at is a uh, uh, is HER two positive. It was the PDL one level. Um, so when we look at the PDL one level. Uh, that means that uh, we are thinking about if it can be treated with uh, immunotherapy. So for, for immunotherapy, you know, I, I think uh, you guys probably hear a lot, uh, maybe from the patient, from the colleague, or from the uh, advertisement. So we, in, in office, we do quite a lot of immunotherapy you know, for, for lung cancer, for GI, for the cancer in GI check, you know, uh, liver cancer, gastric cancer. So the, so, so basically um, the, the, the mechanism is that, um, so uh, when, uh, when patient's body, you know, have, uh, have cancer cells and uh, our immune system was always trying very hard to kill the tumor cells. But tumor cells, they're very sneaky, uh, as you can see here. So the tumor, the tumor cells, they will express uh, PDL1, and then they will bind to the PD1 receptor of the, uh, of the T cell. So you turn off the T cell. Um, so, so during the uh, immunotherapy, we infuse the antibody of PD1 or anti-PDL1. So it breaks down the inhibition. So the T cell get activated again. So, so now we can restore the cancer immune uh, surveillance uh, and, then, and then kill the cancer cells. So for, for gastric cancer, the, the main one we use is uh, PD1 antibody. 
but for lung cancer, we, we use uh, PD-1 and uh, CDLA-4. Uh, and then there's a recent you know, publication about using the leg 3 antibody in, in melanoma. So I think you know, in, in, a, in the future, you know, you're going to hear more and more about using uh, immunotherapy to treat you know, uh, all type of cancers. Okay, so um, so in this like uh, checkmate uh, six four nine study, we can we can see that so the gastric cancer was randomized uh, into uh, chemotherapy or chemotherapy plus uh, immunotherapy. So we can see that the overall survival, the blue line here, uh, is the uh, patient with uh, immunotherapy. The overall survival is like three months longer. Than, than the chemo group. So uh, the higher the pdl one level, the better is the treatment effect. So that's why we pay so much attention to the uh, pathology report to see you know, which patient can receive uh, immunotherapy. And then, you know, so here is like, uh, so a subset of the, uh, of the gastric cancer patient or colon cancer patient, they are called MSR high, so microsatellite instability. So uh, for MSR high uh, patient, they were ev they even more sensitive to, to to immunotherapy. So we can see that here that MSR high patient, you know, we uh, we compare uh, the we compare the immunotherapy. So uh, the green line here versus the chemotherapy. So uh, the average overall survival for chemotherapy is again, you know, 12, 12 months. It is terrible. But when we choose with immunotherapy, uh, the overall survival is not rich. So they continue to, to respond. And the one nice thing about the, the immunotherapy is that uh, a subset of patients, uh, they continue to respond. They, they're not like chemotherapy, you know, eventually they're going to uh, relapse. So I, I have patient that uh, uh, that has a, a metastatic you know, liver cancer patient. It was treated with immunotherapy, you know, uh, three four years ago, and then right now it's like basically disease free. Um, and then I I see him every three to six months. He's continue to be be fine. So it is a very small subset, but I always tell the patient that you know that that so there's a hope. And then, you know, I, I'm not a fortune teller. I'm not able to tell which one has a good response, which one's not. So we have to try and see uh, how it goes. Uh, and, and then uh, sometimes we use a combination of the immunotherapy with target therapy. So in the Kino 811 study, um, so basically a patient Receive the treatment of uh, Ketruda is uh, anti PD1. So Ketruda plus Trastuzumab, that's anti HER2 plus chemotherapy. So the patients, uh, so below this line, that means that they have a good response. So this group of the patient, uh, so the change from the baselines is 100%. That means complete response. That means that you, you you, you see the patient, you know, they're, they're sick, they're pain, and then you give them the combination of the three medication, and then all diseases are gone, like completely. Uh, how long do they, do they last? It depends on, on, on their luck. And for this group of patients, then, you know, uh, there's a significant treatment response. Um, but, you know, uh, again, so, the, the key is uh, patient selection. So this group of patients, they have, uh, they have HER2 expression, they have pdl one expression. So that's why they have such a wonderful treatment response. Okay, uh, of course, you know, <laughs> so immunotherapy is not perfect. It has many side effects. So, so basically almost all organ can be affected by immunotherapy. And then when a patient see the provider, they have no idea. They, they, they can tell you, okay, you know, doc, I, I was doing fine, but then I have this rash or I have like diarrhea 
or I have palpitation and sit up the pun. So, so basically, you know, very, uh, very often the uh, patient will have a uh, thyroid problem. They have hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism. They could have pneumonitis. They could have dermatitis. They could have hepatitis. They could have diarrhea. So, um, and then a patient that treated with, with immunotherapy, they have dry eye, dry mouth, they, they will go to see Dr. Zhou. Um, and then, so, and then you, all, all you need to do is ask, hey, are you on uh, immunotherapy? You know, and then it, it, because if the case, sometimes we can give, give them steroid or stop the treatment. So, okay, so next, um, so next come to the, the, the second part. Uh, I'd just like to share with you guys a very exciting uh, things that we've been doing for the past couple of months. So we have a ongoing clinical trial uh, in, in, in Excelsior, yes, in Excelsior. So it's a randomized phase three study for untreated advanced gastric cancer or GE junction. So it was sponsored by, by Imogen. And then uh, the, the treatment is chemotherapy uh, plus uh, FGFR antibody or plus placebo. It's a one-to-one -one randomization. Uh, the primary endpoint is overall survival. Um, the key secondary endpoint is PFS or objective response. Uh, I'm the uh, local PI for, for this uh, study. So um, the the um, so about ten to twenty percent of the patient they have uh, overexpression of the FGFR antibody on the uh, on the cancer cell surface. So when we when we give them the monoclonal antibody to bind the FGFR, so basically the antibody does two things. Number one, it will block the growth factor signaling. Um, and then uh, number two is that it will enhance uh, ADCC. So uh, with the help of chemotherapy, you know, it will enhance the uh, tumor, uh, tumor lysis. Um, because it's, a F it's FGFR2B antibody, it will avoid the, 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 the non-specific uh, side effects. So, so this is the phase two study that was presented uh, last year in, in ASCO. So the design is very, very similar, you know, advanced gastric cancer, and then uh, they, break, they, they randomize the patient into, uh, into the standard chemotherapy versus chemotherapy plus, uh, plus the monoclonal antibody. And then they look at the PFS or OS. So the, the, the result is that uh, additional um, uh, bin map. So it, it has like, uh, the patient will live 5.7 months longer compared uh, to those receive uh, chemotherapy. Uh, and then uh, the higher the expression of this uh, monoclonal antibody, the better the result. Um, so, so after this study, uh, the the um, the imaging, I think they try to get the FDA approval, uh, so you know, so so everybody can can use it. But FDA say <laughs> you have to get a phase three study, so make sure that it's really uh, that effective uh, before the, the approval. So 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 that's why they are doing this, like you know, uh, national study. Um, so when, when we're doing a, a, a clinical study, you know, uh, one, thing, uh, one thing we care about is the efficacy, but we also pay a lot of attention about the safety. So safety while, uh, because both group, they receive uh, chemotherapy. So uh, common side effect we see in both group, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Uh, peripheral uh, neuropathy. So those are manageable. Uh, but two things uh, we can see that here is like uh, mucositis. So in the, in the treatment group, there's more mucositis. And then in the treatment group, we can see that there's a more 
uh, dry eye. So that's why that's why in in our study, you know, we're gonna so before we start the treatment, we're gonna send the patient to see uh, ophthalmologist, uh, Doctor Joe, and uh, and also in every in in every treatment cycle. So the treatment is every two weeks. So Doctor Joe will check on the eyes, make make sure that you know our patient is uh, is very safe. So the uh, so we have been working on this study for the past you know couple months, and then you know one one you know one key person I want to mention is like uh, it, it's it's is Dr. Pamela Noick. So she so we have a meeting so previously like, you know every couple of days now it's every week, uh, and then so we have a meeting with with Imogen. And then with the research coordinator, you know, sometimes with Dr. Poon, and then we get all the signature from all these people. It's numerous paperwork. <laughs> um, I, I'm I'm sure Dr. Poon knows about. <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> it, it, it's it's a lot of paper, and, and then so at the beginning, you know. It, it, it's like like who who do we ask to to sign this paper? You know they ask question about MD land about this and that. But now we know, um, and so 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 basically you know I, the 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 study is 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 very close to 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 open, and then so all the laboratory specimen will send to our own lab. Uh, so Dr. David Zhang will be in charge of the lab. And then uh, the radiologist, Dr. Yan Kao, uh, will, will be in charge on the radiologist. And then for uh, ophthalmologists, as I mentioned, you know, Dr. Zhou will see all the patients, you know, before each cycle of the treatment, uh, and uh, at the very beginning, make sure the patient is safe. And and then you know, and and then uh, I think Dr. Chen's probably gets sick of this because he had to sign those papers again, again, and again. <laughs> Yeah, and then we, we keep keep bothering. <laughs> um, okay, so um, so at the end of it, you know, I just want to mention that you know we are the only enrolling site in the New York City for for this uh, national study. So not even MSK, not even NYU. Um, so because you know we're trying to bring this opportunity to increase this uh, five point seven months overall survival benefit. Um, and then, so it's a variable opportunity for our patients, for our group, and then for the uh, community. And then we'll really, really appreciate your referral and support. All right. So I try my best. I try my best to make it quick. Okay. I know that you guys want to go to dinner. So uh, feel free to ask any uh, questions. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Guo. This is uh, obviously a very exciting time for Celsius. You know, we are not only starting an educational program, but also a research in, the, in gastric cancer. Uh, as you all know, offering hope to our patient is very important. Yeah. Without hope, uh, life often not worth living. So uh, I think getting involved with these clinical trials really exemplify, you know, we as a group of doctors, what we can do to help our patient, not only taking care of what they are going through, but also give them hope that if there's some really bad disease, we can help them also. So I, I, I really congratulate you for your, uh, you know, for your effort. And uh, we certainly will work together. I mean, this is a team effort. Right, the lab, the ophthalmologists, yeah. you know, everybody's involved. You know, when when you have a clinical trial this big, uh, we need a lot of people working together. So, and I'm sure that there will be a lot of ancillary support that you need. You know, taking care of all the IRB form, make, making sure that you know all the I's are dot T's across. You know, research are very very meticulous. You can't miss any forms or miss any signatures and uh, <laughs> so we'll make sure that all these are done um, you know a, a, as to perfection as possible 
And uh, so, so I, I really look forward to working with you and, uh, and the entire group here. Um, now I want to open the, um, the floor to anyone uh, who's listening live and watching it live who want to ask Dr. Guo any questions. Hey, Dr. Guo, this is Dr. Tin. Uh, thank you hey, for the Dr. presentation. Tin. <laughs> hey, thank you, thank you. Uh, great presentation. Uh, I just had a question. Who do you offer genetic testing to with patients with gastric cancer or, you know, or who would you yeah, offer that to? Um, so, so we, so we can actually do the test in the office. Um, so we send it to uh, Invitae. Uh, so basically, you know, patient come in for high risk uh, cancer patient, uh, or they have very strong family uh, history of, of the cancer. So basically, it so the the test itself is very simple. So we draw you know two vial of blood. Uh, or the or an, an, another way is you know we collect the uh, uh, saliva and then send it out. Uh, so send it out and then we will get the result in about two to three weeks. Um, so uh, insurance company they, they usually they will uh, they cover they they uh, they usually they, they cover all of it. Uh, and then you know if they need to charge a patient they they usually they call the patient and make them make sure that they know that, hey, you have like 50 bucks or 100, but I think the majority of the patient, they don't need to pay any copay. So the, when the results comes back, you know, I, I'll go over the, the, the result with, with the patient. And then, um, so for, you know, uh, for, for example, we, we uh, so one thing that we pay attention is like, you know, for, for example, breast cancer, you know, BRCA1, BRCA2, and then if they need, you know, further surgery, I will refer them to the, to the surgeon. Uh, and then if they, you know, if the, the things that really complicated, we can offer, or we can always, you know, refer them to uh, NYU uh, genetic program, but in general, uh, those are not necessary. So, so basically, you know, long, long story in short is that we can do it in the, in the office. Okay, got it. Uh, so if a patient has gastric cancer, would you screen like right off the bat or would, like what's your threshold in terms of like offering genetic testing uh, for this? Um, so so for, for gastric cancer, you know, I think we look looking for a few things. Uh, number one is, of course, the, the, the family history. Uh, you know, if, if patients, you know, tell me that, hey, you know, the, you know, the father, the brother, uh, and then, you know, they like multiple family history, they have, you know, gastric cancer. That's one thing that we, we look for, or they have, um, or they, uh, or uh, another thing is that if the cancer is, uh, is um, a diffuse type, so that's, that, that's two. Uh, and then if the, anyone, uh, it, if any, you know, female member of the family, they have lobular, uh, at the lobular carcinoma of the breast. So that's also another hint. Um, but it, it, it's like, I, I, I really don't have a very high threshold. So, so basically, you know, if patients are young and have multiple, you know, family member of those, I, I, I'll, I'll just send it out. But I think in reality, it's like, it's not, it's, I think for gas cancer so far, I haven't, I haven't catch any one of it that has like you no know, genetic mutation that's causing the gastric cancer. For, for breast, we catch like about one or two every year. It's, it's, not, it's not, the, not as common as, uh, you know, as we thought, you know, although in textbook, we have to, we have to you know, uh, remember those and then they show up again and again in, in the boy exam. But in reality, it's not that often. Got it. Thank you. Sure, sir. Sure. Uh, any other questions? Um, as you know, this uh, this uh, program is being recorded, and so if you want to go back and uh, go over some of the slide uh, later on your own, you can. Uh, we're going to post it 
in in our uh, one of the drive that you we will give you access so you can go back and you know look at a slide if there's any question you can uh, uh, ask Dr. Guo uh, directly and if you have any patient you want to refer to him for the trial definitely <laughs> let him know. Um, Dr. Guo, uh, thanks Dr. Quinn as well and Dr. Guo, great, uh, this is Jen from Integrated Care Services Oh, and uh, a great presentation, uh, very helpful information for um, the gastric cancer patient. So I have two questions about the um, phase three study. So the first one is, uh, if the patient is interested in the phase three study, how long is the processing with the prescreening and the randomization if after he signed the concern, if possible? Do you have any okay. idea? So, very, very, so that's like very good question. Um, you know, and then, you know, pay almost all the patients ask this kind of question. Um, so, it, um, so the randomization, before randomization, there's a two part. One is pre-screening, uh, the other one screening. So basically we want to make sure that the patient will, will meet all the criteria uh, of, of the study. And then the second thing is that we want to make sure that the patient have FGFR2 B over expression. So, um, if the patient, you know, when we see the patient, uh, we have the tissue, uh, we will send, we will send the slide or the block, uh, to the, to the sponsor. And then, you know, usually within a couple of days, uh, we can get the answer. So, uh, so, and then up, after that, we can, we can randomize it. So, so usually it happens, you know, in a, in a few days, uh, sometimes we need to do a re-biopsy. Uh, because, you know, sometimes the tissue is not enough. We'll ask Dr. Tin to, you know, biopsy the patient again, um, or the patient will refer outside, we'll refer back to the GI to do a, do a re-biopsy or, or biopsy the, 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 you know, the liver. The, um, um, so make sure that the FGFIR. Um, so for, uh, for those patients, if we, if we don't want to wait, we can give them a one cycle of the chemotherapy before the randomization. So, so that we don't, you know, we don't as a patient, you know, keep waiting and, and, and waiting. Um, so, so, so basically it's, you know, I think it, it, it depends on the patient situation. Uh, you know, if, so basically if, if we have the slides, then we can, we can do the randomization very quickly. And after the randomization, you know, we can start the, the treatment, you know, very soon. So, uh, for for um, uh, for the chemo for the, for the chemo drug, uh, it's pretty standard. You know, we it, it's just like I, I order now. I can get the drug tomorrow. Um, so for the experimental drug, uh, we have to you know contact the emergent to see if we keep it in stock or what. So so all this question, you know, we have we'll have a better answer after after we enroll the patient in but, but okay. i don't yeah but i don't expect it will be waiting too long and then and also you know patient can get uh, one cycle of chemotherapy before the randomization okay good thanks uh, so i think you might answer my second question but i just want to make sure that there are so it, you means like uh, there's no wash out time required from the previous chemo for the uh, for the ongoing patient um, so this is like a uh, phase one study, uh, previous mm -hmm. untreated. So there's no phase one. There's no oh, oh, sorry, yeah. study. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Any other questions? <laughs> yeah, this is Dr. Chang from cardiology. I don't have a question. I just want to thank Dr. Kuo. And uh, I just want to wish everybody a happy... Uh, National Doctors' Day. Oh wow! Yay! Yay! Thank yeah, you. That's right. That's very, very good. Happy Doctors' Day. Doctor Day. <laughs> yeah. I don't think too many people knew that this is National Doctors' Day. I, uh, no, we I need to appreciate to get... our sometimes. No, <laughs> you know, I, I, I was hoping to get a big red envelope from the group. Doctor Chen, you get yours. We need one from Doctor Chen as well. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Nylon. So. Um, well, I, I just want to make a quick announcement. The next uh, presentation will be by, by Dr. Leibowitz, our chief medical officer. 
and the date would be April 27, and the last Wednesday of, uh, of April. And his topic will be dietary prevention of renal disease. So uh, a very, very uh, important topic uh, for, for all the internists and the specialists. So uh, looking forward to um, you know, all of you. Um, I think this has been a very exciting first uh, program and uh, we don't have any major technical difficulty and uh, and I really enjoy this uh, you know interaction with all the all the specialists and internists and um, I think we're going to have a lot of fun uh, going going forward okay thank you very much mm -hmm. all right okay thank you okay so now thank you in, in, enjoy the dinner thank you great job thank yeah. you Yeah. <laughs>